how's it going? I hope you're having a good day and week and month and year. Uh, today I wanted to do another drawing video, but this is more of like a speed draw. There are portions where I've, you know, done it at like two times speed, so that's mostly just to cut my video times down a little bit. This is kind of using the same drawing format as my previous video, so I'm starting with a really loose pencil sketch um, and just trying to figure out where I want the drawing to go and then going back in with the char pack marker and then later I'm gonna add some colored pencil and gouache and uh, oil pastel and do a lot of layering to add more depth but we went into detail of you know what materials I used last video so I thought this time it would be a little bit more interesting to talk about I guess my history as an artist and what has led me to make images like the ones you see in this video here and my other videos um, I for a long time was working figuratively um, really, I've been drawing since I was very young, and it was when I was like 13 or 14. Um, I was really into like anime, and so I was drawing a lot from like mangas and um, screenshots from animes that I was into. Um, but then that kind of evolved into me doing more photorealistic stuff. And uh, when I went to get my undergraduate degree, it was more of a stylized realism. And throughout all of these periods of my style evolving, I always um, felt really conflicted about how to make the work good and how to make it fun. I never felt like anything I did was good enough. Um, I don't know, it's like tough working in a representational style because your main goal is to make something recognizable, right? Um, you're trying to replicate something that exists in real life and obviously as I was doing at the time there's a lot of freedom in how you interpret real life objects or people um, and how you s can stylize them there's a lot of room for interpretation there but I don't know I always felt kind of dissatisfied with how many limitations there were because at the end of the day you're still working from a thing that exists in real life uh, uh, you're not drawing or painting to create a thing in itself a thing that only exists there you're drawing to reference reality um, and I felt like that was really restrictive. Um, toward the end of my undergraduate career, I started experimenting with soft sculpture. Um, I was making these like life-size dolls and they were really fun. And I felt like I was connecting with um, a lot of my childhood interests in a way that um, drawing never offered. Um, and then I went on to graduate school and I, I mean, I took like a year gap between my undergraduate and my uh, graduate school. But in graduate school, I guess I decided to abandon representation because of how dissatisfied I was and how limiting it felt. And I felt like when I was drawing in a representational style it I was never happy with anything I was making I was always frustrated um, I never got any pleasure from the act of drawing itself 
which like if you're gonna make your whole life about being an artist you should enjoy the thing that you're doing right like <laughs> what else is gonna motivate you to improve your work and to dedicate um, immense amounts of time to it other than you enjoying it in some capacity uh, I feel like that's a really important part of being an artist uh, is finding a a medium, uh, a technique, a way of making that is fulfilling to you. And drawing people was not that for me. Um, so yeah, in graduate school, I wanted to explore the soft sculpture work a little bit more um, and move toward abstraction, which is a thing that I had already uh, always been interested in, um, but intimidated by because it felt too challenging, too open-ended. Uh, I felt like I had been drawing figures for so long that drawing abstractly, uh, it's like, how, what do you gauge the, the value on? You know what I mean? Like, if you're drawing figurative work, and say you're like drawing a lady that's laying down and it looks like the photo you're referencing then you know that you've at least successfully recreated the photo through a drawing now whether it's like a good and important drawing is another thing but like you can say definitively like oh yeah this looks exactly like the photo and so that's successful but when you're drawing abstractly it's like what is that success based off of and I mean, that was back in oh, 2015 when I started working abstractly, and it took me a long time to find my footing, you know? And I was still creating work in response to the human form, and kind of reminiscent of the human form. So my soft sculptures were either like imitating these very abstracted, particularly abstracted like female forms, very stylized like hourglass shapes um, without being literally figures. But they kind of functioned in the same way and it being a soft sculpture, it has the same presence as a body. It sort of acts like a body, it slumps, um, it's animated in the way that it occupies space in the same way that a body is. And I, I liked that and it was familiar to me. Um, and the fact that they were sculptures, they were objects that were existing in space, which kind of like solved the problem of, uh, or it solved the challenge that abstraction offered, which was that you were referencing, like to make abstract work, you have to reference a non-real thing. You have to draw something that doesn't exist already. Um, so I figured why not work abstractly, but m make real things, make real objects. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where the abstract work started. And then I, at the same time, was doing these, um, I guess they were mostly doodles to plan out the soft sculptures. Um, and I was thinking back on this sort of like stylized uh, figurative work that I had been doing prior to me uh, you know, starting graduate school. And part of my frustration during that stylized figurative period was that I felt like I was just drawing different versions of the same thing every time. So I tried to reduce that down to uh, a few simple shapes that I felt like kept turning up in my figurative work. So I pulled those repetitive shapes into my abstraction um, but eventually after working abstractly for a, 
a, a certain period of time, I felt like it wasn't necessary anymore to work directly from the human body and build images from that. Uh, and I got a little bit more free with my references. And I started to realize that I had more interest in language and writing and the connections between writing and drawing and like oh, the similar functions they serve. Um, I feel like, I, I don't know, writing has always been for me like when you're using your hand to write words, you aren't necessarily worried about the image that's being made, but rather the thought that's being conveyed. Um, or like the thought that's being expressed is going to be your primary concern rather than the actual letter you're drawing, if that makes sense. So I feel like I, that, that's what I want my drawings to do. I want them to... I want the primary concern of my abstract work to be expressing a feeling or a state of mind rather than focusing on the form itself. And I think focusing on how I draw, I think I want to get to the point where there's not this sort of like obsessive laboring over each um, phase of making an image. So that at the start and the middle and the end, it's carefree and I'm able to let go of a lot of my obsessive tendencies so that I can find a kind of release in making work rather than be stressed out whenever I'm drawing. And for a long time, that's been my, my deal, you know? I, I get stressed out when I draw and I feel like nothing goes right and I feel like I make a mistake and I can't fix it and then I have to like restart the entire drawing. Um, I'm worried if I make a move that it'll mess the entire drawing up so I don't make any bold moves and it ends up making really stale work. But the more practice I get drawing, the easier those things are to let go. And the more freedom I allow myself, um, particularly through drawing abstractly, the, the easier it is to just like work quickly and not overthink things and have fun and making art and really existing <laughs> the main focus of that should be to be happy not to make something of quality, you know? Like, you should enjoy the things that you're doing first and foremost. Um, and yeah, so that's, <laughs> I guess, my spiel on, like, why I work abstractly now and what work I used to make. Um, it's, it's pretty much done, this drawing. Uh, I like the way it turned out. It reminds me of watermelon. Um, <laughs> Which I guess I'm like, I've got summer on the brain, so... Um, yeah, it gives me watermelon vibes. Um, but I like how this turned out a lot. I like the colors, I feel like the uh, layers provide a lot of depth and kind of make it a little bit three-dimensional, which I enjoy. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a good week. I'll see you next week. Bye!